Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a special one for little kids, and we'll be reviewing the game, what? My Little Scythe. By Stonemeyer Games. It's for two to seven players, and I think it has a single player variant, or at least you can add computer players if you would one like. One to six players. One to six players. Okay, yeah. there you go. But in the game, you're basically playing as siblings from the town of uh, the kingdom of Palm, mm -hmm. in which you're trying to partake in this harvest festival, and you're going around trying to collect apples and whatnot so that you can get four magical trophies. And the first player to four trophies wins and gets to rule the kingdom. It is for ages eight and up, and takes about forty-five minutes to an hour to play. In the game, you're basically going to have one of these little boards here, and you'll be utilizing it to make action choices. And you can change the board along the way as well, as for moving, seeking, as well as making. Because you'll be making certain things like pies and utilizing your apples and whatnot to make some cool stuff. Uh, it is a competitive game, but it is also a family game. It's very, very simple to learn, very easy to set up. There's a lot of pieces, and it definitely has a lot of production value associated in the game. Yes. But overall, it's stunning looking. So let's go ahead and take a look at the game and talk about how it plays. So here we have the game My Little Scythe and pretty much everything that's included here. Of course, I set aside the stuff that's for the uh, solo player mode. Uh, we played the multiple player mode, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, over here are all the different units, right? We have apples, and then we've got these little gems here. Every player is going to get one of their action pawns, as well as two sibling miniatures. I think they're both uh, exactly alike, but they're siblings. They're twin siblings, right? Yeah. There's also some pies over here that you can <laughs> be using for what? Pie fights. <laughs> so you're basically going to be uh, hiding your number that you're going to be using as well as um, what you can use pies as well secretly. You can use magic spells to add to your pies. Count. As well as, yes. uh, the, this, does this illustrate how many pie yes, battles you're going to be correct. in? And there's all, everybody starts at three I believe, right? That's the starting area yeah. there. As well as this over here is a friendship okay. tracker, which starts here. And the objective of the game is pretty simple. You need to get four trophies and you can get how many a turn? One. <laughs> yeah, you can get one trophy a turn. So if you get an extra one, you have to wait till the next turn to gather that. Mm -hmm. There are eight different things you need to do, whether it be uh, get, gathering eight pies, winning a pie fight, taking four apples to the keep, which is the middle space here, taking four diamonds to the keep. Mm -hmm. What are these ones over here? This one is uh, completing two quests. We have having three magic spells. And if you use a magic spell, it does, it's gone, huh? It yeah. yeah, so you have to be yeah. careful to save those. Uh, I believe this one's winning two pie fights. And this is having uh, eight on the friendship tracker. Yes. So if you can get to eight on your friendship tracker, that's going to score oh, wait, you. This is, no, this, this is getting two power-ups. That's two power-ups, yes. This is the pie fight. Power-ups are interesting because they change the way your tableau functions. Every player is going to get the characters as well as all the tokens listed. And uh, you're going to put your trophies on the map here. Uh, which signifies these are the ones you need in order to complete the game. And when you complete a trophy, you're simply going to put it over here in the location that is mm -hmm. what you did. Um, these are what you can do. You can move, seek, and make on your turn. You're able to uh, simply move your character, and it tells you how you can make it. But move based on either, it's either two spaces if you have nothing that you're holding, one if you do. Mm -hmm. There's the seek action that will let you roll die, which will allow you to basically spawn more... Uh, gems and or apples on the board you can you can give yeah. it to your opponents right yeah so what's interesting about the die is if you roll them they actually also in addition to the symbol they have a color and that color you as the rolling uh character can choose which square of that color to put the diamond on so for instance i rolled a, a red apple which means i'm going to take an apple and put it anywhere on the red area here yeah. whether it be maybe one of my characters i can put it on myself or yeah. whether it be an opponent's character i put it on them and when you put it on an opponent's character tile, you'll go up a friendship point because you're being friendly. Yep, that's pretty useful because you can score victory, a victory trophy for that. Mm -hmm. After you do that, you don't need to be friendly anymore, though. <laughs> uh, to set up the game, it's pretty simple. You have an outside uh, encampment you'll start with. You'll get a special player ability, which will meet one of these random cards, secret mm -hmm. abilities. Yep. Uh, and then you're going to have this board here that you're going to tank and you're going to like, you know, spin in some way or another. Depending on the number of players in the game is where you're going to be setting up your different mm -hmm. characters. And uh, it tells you what you're going to put down on the board. So, for instance, this one specifically says uh, you need to put... 
one gem here, uh, one apple there, okay. and then a quest, which are these guys here. And you do that all the way around the board. Then this is going to go go away, which is a nice, easy way to set up a game, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to be taking your turn, utilizing your pawn on your board. So whether you want to move, seek, or make. You can only do one action uh, you can, uh, per turn, and you have to do a different action every other turn. So yep. you can't move twice in a row. Correct. When you walk onto a space that has a resource you just simply gather it and uh, if you need more resources on the board you're going to go ahead and seek now the last thing is obviously making which is really interesting you'll be able to utilize your apples and your gems and that will allow you to either gather pies gather spell cards or even potentially upgrade your player board to making things uh, a little more interesting yeah just like that obviously if you get two of those cards uh, you'll be able to uh, gather a trophy as well so increasing your uh, ability to play the game mm -hmm. will also give you the ability to gather trophies so and those are some pretty things. cool stuff about the board. It's actually not being able to move twice in a row is not too much of a deterrent until later in the game, because we also have these portal spots here. So when you move on to the portal spot, your next move action can uh, ha have you go here, here, any of the other portals, or the main castle. And that's important too, because you're going to need to be dropping off things at the castle. Yes. Uh, when you go and land into another player's space, you're actually going to engage in a pie fight. So, for instance, if there's a player here and a player here, this player chose to move uh, for their action on their turn. If they end up here on the space, they're actually going to fight each other, mm -hmm. utilizing these pie boards, a as well as any additional... Um, any additional spells they might acquire throughout the game. The spell cards are over here, and they have a number that will indicate how many pies they can choose to throw in addition to whatever they're choosing to use on the board here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're when you use these pies here is what it symbolizes down here, right? So if you have yes. three pies, you can use all three. You can only use up to three if you have three pies. But if you had many, more, many you have. <laughs> up to seven, I'm imagining, right? So there's most likely chances when people are going to remember... Uh, they're going to know how much people have. If they have no spell cards mm -hmm. and they have, you know, six pies, they know green is going to beat them in a fight if they only have four and no, and no spell cards. So it's important but to keep track of that. But you choose how many pies you want to use. You don't have to use all six. So. And maybe you need to save them for the... Yeah, uh, you want to get that trophy at eight. So, and that's the basic idea of the game, just simply going around in circles, uh, choosing your actions, gathering uh, your tableau management aspects, moving around the board, and fighting as well as trying to get as yeah. many of these achievements as possible once you get those four that's an instant win it comes with a little achievement sheet here too yeah. where you're able to mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, put your name down and uh, just show how well you did with you and your kids so uh, that's the main aspects I think of the game there's anything else you wanted to add that I don't think I um, covered maybe the quest so if you land on the quest token you can uh, pick up one of these uh, quests and what's Unique about the quest is uh, usually they have good options and bad options. As well as a neutral option yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So when, when you do good options, you're usually helping someone else. And a lot of times you'll get friendship. Uh, if you do uh, the bad options, they, they'll they benefit you more. But you might lose friendship or lose something else, right? And then the neutral is kind of like, I just, I just don't want to do this. I'll just get a, a small bonus. And so the game also comes with the ability to play a single player mode, it has all the rules in it, and of course it's game trays that help produce the game as far as the quality goes. So it has yeah, this thing really here, nice game tray. as well as this one here, and it has a place where you can put all your miniatures and whatnot. It shares in quality with the Grim Forest as far as the uh, beautiful miniatures and all that mm -hmm. good stuff. Mm -hmm. But before we get into the thoughts uh, on our game, uh, we're going to go ahead and show you down below just a good look at my little scythe and everything that's included in the game. All right, so we went ahead and showed you what the game looks like and everything involved with it, as well as a brief synopsis of how to play the game. So we're going to go ahead and give you our thoughts on my little scythe, uh, Stonemeyer Games is uh, basically a smaller kid or younger kid version of the game Scythe. First thing to note is I've never played the game Scythe. I have not either. <laughs> so this is a review based on never playing that game. Whether that helps you or not, I'm not so certain, but we have not played Scythe. This is just uh, my little scythe, which is what we've played. So the quality of the game, what do you think? Uh, the components are great. Like there's so much stuff in this game for what you get. The miniatures are really cute. And anyone who like has kids or has been around kids or works with kids knows kids love animals. So being able to be uh, animal kingdom and, you know, trying to get the, the <laughs> to rule the kingdom is a great theme for kids. 
Yeah, the game's components are amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. there is no lack in quality in this game. I guess you... The tokens, they're so cute. Yeah, like, you got little plastic apple those. tokens. Yeah. I guess I guess the one thing I could say is I guess these player mats are thinner than the upgrades attached to them, as well as even the pie boards themselves. But realistically, in any other game, that wouldn't even be a complaint for me. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to give it a negative in that and regard. And you're not moving the player boards around, so you're not. they're not going to get worn as much as... I see why they wanted these to be a little thicker. If anything, people might say that this is overproduced. Like, that's that might be what people might say. It's, yeah, there's, it's so well done, you know. It's just... But, like, it really works. Because, like, for the dice, you you need to have, you know, the color as well as the symbol. So you need the unique ones. It needs to be easy to read for kids. The, the board is also huge, as you saw. We yeah. couldn't even get... We barely got it all in one frame. <laughs> it's thick. It's wonderful. Uh, it's very, very vibrant. Yeah, the, the size of the board makes it easier for kids to see all the different squares and, you know, develop those fine motor skills to move across the board. If you're a if you're a, little, a painter, right, and you have a kid that you want to get mm -hmm. into painting, this mm -hmm. would be a great My Little Painter set as well because <laughs> the miniatures are not super complex or detailed. Uh, they yeah. are, but they're not to the point where a kid can't actually where can't, paint. Where you're like little tiny and <laughs> So awesome as far as quality goes, this is a a home run. It really, really is. Uh, as far as gameplay goes, it's very, very simple. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, right? And uh, the setup isn't even that really complicated, I guess. You spin the little token here, then you're going to place the pieces down based on where it says, put yourself on the home base, and begin other than you have like your little friendship and your you, pie track yeah on your turn you basically have what you know just you do one thing you choose what you're gonna do and so it's also easy to have those limited choices because on other players turns especially if you're playing a larger six player game you can just think about what you want to do on your turn you just have the one choice you go and then it's the next player's turn so I believe this one said it was for ages 8 and up and takes yep. about 45 minutes. Uh, 45 minutes is right on the point, actually. We, we learned how to play the game the first time in about that much time. Yes, and, with three players. Yep, yeah, with three players the first time. And mm -hmm. uh, not only that, but 8 and up is actually a reasonable suggested age group. I would not suggest playing with more than maybe two 8-year-olds. Like Realistically, it, it's probably a young teen game, but it can play with younger mm -hmm. Well, solidified like board gamers maybe, yeah 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 you know, or, or more experienced eight-year-old gamers but i can yeah. see it i can see it i would i wouldn't sit down or i would i don't i don't imagine a bunch of eight-year-olds playing the game by themselves it's, it's a Not family the first game time, at least yeah families would be better this is definitely mm -hmm. a father daughter husband mm -hmm. or you know, wife kind of thing it's a mix of, uh, bag with all that goes i could see kids playing this definitely in their tweens and it the complexity is enough to where it's gonna be different every time you play there's mm -hmm. a bunch of the different upgrades which are are significantly different. You have the quests which change your thought process. It's nice because it's like, do you want to be good or bad? And it kind of promotes positivity in this yeah. game. And even the negativity is more of like cute stuff. It's just throwing pies at each other, um, mm -hmm. utilizing tactics, making um, wise choices. Like, is it might be worth it to beat the, the pie fight, but it's going to cost you the ability to gain uh, all the pies you need. Yeah. Uh, or your friendship's going to go lower when you fight, so you're and not going to be able to get that other more. player might be less inclined to be nice to you <laughs> after well, you've yeah. beat them in a pie fight. <laughs> not only that, though, but if you go too low on your friendship meter, you can't get trophies. Yeah, so yeah. you got to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overutilize the um, aggressive nature that the game could be. Uh, the board is easy to manipulate. Moving around the board, you can simply mm -hmm. go from space to space. And it's very, very simplistic as to how it works, which I think is great for this type of game. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have any idea of how to compare it to the game Scythe, but I can probably say almost for a fact that if you're a grown adult and you're thinking about getting this game and you don't have kids, I would suggest probably getting the Scythe uh, main game. Yeah, it's a little bit too simple for adult players. Uh, just if you only play with other adults. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our first game was with a uh, full team of adults, so we could learn the game rather quickly, so we could play with the kids. Um, and we had fun, don't get me wrong. Like, it's a game yeah. that I would definitely play again, even with a bunch of adults. So if that's your, uh, you know, maybe you already have Scythe and you wanted to try this one out as well, or maybe you have friends that have kids, and this would be a good addition to your collection mm -hmm. for when they come over and bring them. I, I, I think I think it's pretty solid as far as that goes. So artwork, quality of the game, the mechanics all work. It fits mm -hmm. very well. Like I said, the only negative I could possibly give this game is I wouldn't recommend it for a straight-up adult group. Yeah, for an adult group, it felt like you were finally getting into the game, and then it was over. <laughs> it's rather quick, yeah. yeah. I collected my four... 
uh, trophies almost instantaneously, mm -hmm. which is nice though because you can play again. But it has a lot of positives to it. This is definitely a game I would really, really recommend you getting if you have kids and you want to get them into gaming. It promotes a lot of positive aspects in gaming, as well as teaching them mechanics, yes. teaching them to be nice, and also a little bit how you can be a little competitive and, and yeah. mean. Uh, competitiveness in a positive and challenging way, so that's good. Yeah, well, the dice are wonderful to use. It makes uh, they they function very well, and they give you so many choices, which is so nice. Giving kids the choice, it's not simply playing a card. So overall, my recommendation for Little Scythe is uh, very very high. I would put this as my board unfiltered gamer uh, recommended game. I would get my seal of approval and I would definitely and I will definitely play it with whenever kids pop over. I was hoping to have our little reviewer review it but she's been uh, very very busy with school unfortunately so we Back wanted to, to get school. this out and show you <laughs> what the game looked like and what we thought about it. Overall though very 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 positive. What do you think yeah? Yeah I mean it's just it's so bright and fun and I don't know kids just are gonna love it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome, great. Well, if you're interested in taking a look at My Little Scythe for whatever reason you want to, go ahead and go in the description below and take a peek at it. You can go ahead and purchase it if it's something you'd like. But it's a great game. We recommend it. My Little Scythe, Unfiltered Gamer says yes.